But Hua, you can only get out to, and there's great diving out there and snorkeling. And why won't they allow you out there? Uh, it's all pure-blooded Hawaiians. Yeah, yeah, it's privately owned. It's called the Forbidden Island. There uh, appears to be a little island on the left side of the meat you have out there, too. That's actually part of the same island. By the way, that pond to your right is where you trout fish. That's the Pu'ulua Reservoir. They raise them in that rectangular tank right there. That's your only military base way off to the left out there. See all those white buildings along the shoreline? Barking Sands Naval Base. And then just to the right of it, there's some more white buildings, a little more loosely spaced. That's the uh, Pacific Missile Range. Already, you can see as you look at the west side, the waves are way bigger than what we saw over on the southern side. This is a forest fire right here. Happened five years ago. Uh, they cleared them out about a year and a half ago. Used to all be eucalyptus right here. These are hunting roads, these dirt roads. They hunt uh, black-tailed deer, goat, wild boar, pig, pheasant, turkey. Everything but the chickens. And we're the only island with no mongoose. There's no predator here. 67 degrees now, about 18 Celsius. Now you'll see a paved road approaching. This road goes down to those domes to our left. That's a tracking station called Makaha Ridge. That's used by the Pacific Missile Range. Everything left of those domes is naval airspace. Now if you want a little bit of a longer trail up in the canyon, but something with a nice payoff, try one called Nualolo. That trail ends up on the edge of that cliff straight ahead of us, but if you go all the way to the point where you reach a metal fence, it's an amazing view down the coastline. I'll show you. The nice thing about it too is it's one of these trails that I never see more than maybe two, three people a day on it. Again, edge of this ridge is the new Alolo Trail approaching. So as we start to cross over this ridge here, just start to take a look around you. And uh, here she comes. Welcome to Nepali. There's a beautiful reef approaching down to our left here called Nualolo Kai. Smaller buds when they come out here like the zodiacs love using that spot for snorkeling. Always seems to be a lot of sea turtles hanging out down there. So far, pretty quiet. What we'll do first is head into a valley called Honupu. Same name as the beach closest to us. Now this can be reached, but only during the summer. Only by swimming to it. It's known to be Hawaiian burial grounds. That's also called Valley of the Kings. You'll understand quickly why it's one of my favorites too.
This is why I love the valley though. So if you're towards the back, I want you to look way back to your left here like you're looking out towards the ocean. Take a look at this view coming up. Don't forget to look up around or two. These are very unique cliffs. They're called fluted cliffs, sometimes called cathedrals. They go up about 4,000 feet here. A larger beach to our right, that's Kalalau. That's where the Nepali Trail ends. 22 miles round trip. It takes about 9 hours one way. In the summertime, you'll see a lot of people paddle through. It's a lot faster. This time of year, it's too rough. We talked about it earlier, but when you drive to the end of the road up in the canyon, this is the valley you look into. This is Kalalau Valley. The overlook's way up in the back of the valley on the edge of the clouds up there. There's a trail that runs that contour, too, on a clear day. It's called Pihia. It's an amazing view, and it's super easy. I'll try and show you what the Nepali Trail looks like too. Keep in mind that some parts of the trail are only about 8 inches. So what you're going to see may seem pretty narrow to you, but it's actually one of the wider parts of the trail. Part of it, see that pinnacle to our left there with the red hill on the left side of it? The trail goes down that hill. It's exactly what they call it. It's just a big switchback going down that hillside there. Looks fairly quiet. The northern edge of the Nepali coastline too, sometimes you feel a little bit of wind in a couple places, you'll expect something along the way. And if you look straight down to your right, there's a trail right below you, that's about 9 miles in, see that line zigzagging back and forth? That's the easy part. The hard part, check it out online later on, there's a bunch of videos about it. It's called Crawler's Ledge. You'll still see the trail down to our left too, there's a, a little sea cave approaching down here, right above it, that line, that's the trail right there. Three to five hundred feet off the water. Now, nobody kayaks in Nepali during the winter. This is because the waves are too big. Fifteen to twenty-five feet high is about average, although they do reach fifty feet. And when that happens, these caves you may see around here, they basically turn themselves into cannons. Just to give you an idea, in the summertime, you could be out here on a stand-up paddleboard, and you should be able to paddle right along the edge of the rocks. Right now, no way. Just been watching it all morning. Already the waves are getting bigger towards this afternoon. Is that common in the summer that you can paddleboard? Say that again? Is that common in the summer that you can paddleboard? Yeah, in the summertime, it's pretty common, yeah. We even run a uh, annual stand-up paddle race here down the coastline. There's two beaches approaching up ahead of us here. The closest one, that little guy, that's Hanakapiai. That's the first two miles of the Nepali Trail. Take you about an hour to get there. Regardless of what you see happening at that beach, don't swim there. Hanakapiai is one of the most dangerous rip currents on the island. You're talking nearly a thousand drownings just there. It's totally different to K. That's the beach you see way up ahead of us. That's where the road ends on the North Shore.